Some people have a favourite number, which if you think about it, it's pretty weird. I mean, what's so favourable about it? It probably means something to you or you find it lucky in some way. Your lucky number has no value or meaning to others though, let alone our universe. I mean, I couldn't care less what your lucky number is. Mine's number three by the way, but you don't care about that, the universe doesn't care. There are however some numbers that are extremely important. For our top 10 list here we have the most important numbers to our universe and ultimately our very own existence. We live in three spatial dimensions, up, down and side to side, x, y and z coordinates if you will. We live in a 3D world. This is important to our very existence, as I don't think we can live in any more than the dimensions that we're living in now. I mean, to actually think about it completely messes up my mind, and that's not to think about the other dimension that we also live in, one time dimension. I mean, what would life be like with more than one time dimension? We measure time as a physical change of something and the flow of time in the direction of increasing entropy. Imagine more dimensions of this, absolutely crazy, and I don't think we can exist. So dimensions that we live in, very important. Producing cold is a lot more difficult than producing heat. Absolute zero is the lower limit of the thermodynamic temperature scale. This is the lowest temperature possible, and we call it zero point energy. It's the lowest possible energy that a quantum mechanical physical system can have. Temperature is actually defined by the relationship between energy and entropy. So at absolute zero, the particles are not moving at all. It's one of those figures where we can get very, very close to absolute zero, but we just can't quite get there. The next number is very similar to absolute zero, as in we cannot quite reach the limit. We can get close, but we can't get to the maximum speed, and the speed of light. Light speed is the maximum speed at which all matter and information can travel in our universe in a vacuum. Nothing can travel faster. For us and our eyes, light is instant. But for massive distances and sensitive measurements, we can notice the effects of the speed of light. The speed of light is the speed that all massless particles and changes in all fields travel in a vacuum. And these fields and particles travel at light speed all the time, and regardless of the frame of reference to the observer. The speed of light conjures up a lot of thought in universal violations and paradoxes, one of the most common ones is time travel. Travelling back in time to get the almanac sounds like a good plan to me. Any object where the radius is smaller than its Schwarzschild radius is called a black hole. So we are talking about a mass of an object in the space it occupies. The Schwarzschild radius is a rule. It's the radius of a sphere which if all the mass of an object was compressed in that sphere, the escape velocity would equal the speed of light. So let's take our moon. If the mass of the moon was the same as it is now, but we squashed it down to the size of about a tenth of a millimetre, then it becomes a black hole. Anything bigger than a tenth of a millimetre, then it wouldn't turn into a black hole. When the Hadron Collider got popular in the media, people thought that it could create a black hole. Although as black holes decrease in size, the evaporation time increases. A black hole the size of a car would be gone in a nanosecond, let alone the exceptional small scales in particle accelerators. In the Large Hadron Collider, black hole would be gone before you knew it was there. So theoretically making it possible that black holes could be popping in and out of our existence all the time, but we just don't know it yet. Closely related to the number we just talked about is the Chandraska limit. It is the maximum mass of a stable white dwarf star. A white dwarf star is extremely hot, but if it's stable it will just cool slowly and die. If it exceeds the Chandraska limit, 
then it can collapse in on itself and either turning into a black hole or a neutron star. However, it normally will explode before collapsing in on itself. Stars with a mass under this Chandraska limit stay stable as a white dwarf. It's important as ultimately we want neutron stars, black holes and supernova explosions as they are extremely important for our existence. Supernova and colliding neutron stars produce the heavy elements that we know of, and black holes and the intense gravitational effects theoretically keep the galaxies together. Everything we see is made up of other things, and all the other things have energy. The quantum mechanic world is the field of study that tries to explain this. Planck constant explains the quantum action in this world. It's the smallest piece of energy or quanta in the universe. It's a subatomic constant, so in the world we see with our own eyes, it's way too much of a smaller scale to care about. But like I said, the world we see is made up of small things and small quanta. To understand the small things can lead to understanding everything else. This section cheats a little bit, as in fact, for our number fourth spot, we actually have a total of 23 numbers. We are calling it the Standard Model Mass Index. The Standard Model of Particle Physics contains 25 fundamental dimensionless constants. These numbers are truly embedded in our universe as they can't be changed to suit our needs like some other numbers can. For now, we are looking at 23 of those numbers. And here they are. 15 of them are the masses of our fundamental particles and 8 other numbers that govern the interactions that some of the particles have. As you can see, one of these numbers is unknown. This number is trying to explain about the neutrino and its quantum state. These four numbers describe how quarks oscillate between different forms. And these numbers here do the same thing for the neutrino particle. The neutrino particles are a little bit more difficult to detect than some of the other particles, so it's no wonder why we've got an unknown value there. We just don't know everything yet. This is the ratio of the energy density of the universe. It was originally introduced by Albert Einstein in 1917, but since 1998 we now know a lot more. We now know that around 68% of the mass energy density of the universe is attributed to dark energy. We don't know much about this yet, but it's a kind of anti-gravity that dilutes much more slowly than matter as the universe expands. A lot of the time the cosmological constant is referred to as omega lambda, which is the critical density of our universe. So the fate of our universe is in this number. Will we expand forever? Or will the big crunch destroy us? The strong force is, well, like it says it is, it's strong. In fact, it's the strongest force out of all four known forces we have. A hundred times stronger than electromagnetism. A million times stronger than the weak force and 10 to the power of 38 times stronger than gravity, at a range of 10 to the minus 15 meters, which is where the strong force works its magic. This number is so goddamn important as it keeps all matter together. Us, all atoms would rip apart if the strong force number was any different. So the strong coupling constant is the strength of the force that's transmitted by the gluons which bind quarks together, ultimately holding all the baryonic matter together. The strong coupling constant and our next number and ultimately the number one on our list also governs how efficient nuclear fusion is and governs the energy output of the stars. The fine structure constant is at number one. All of the numbers on this list are important, and if you change a lot of them then we probably wouldn't exist. The fine structure constant is the strength of the electromagnetic interactions between elementary charged particles. The value of it has no accepted theory about why it's this number. 
It's one of those universal mysteries, and a beautiful one at that, because if this number was any different, then we wouldn't be here. The fine structure constant is one of those truly dimensionless fundamental physical constants of our universe.